Thank you, uh, uh, Peter. And um, uh, it's, of course, a tremendous honor to have been Peter's student. Peter is uh, modest as the, intro, uh, as the presenter, uh, but easily this country's leading expert on Latin America. And it's, it's a tremendous uh, pleasure and honor for me to have him here to uh, discuss with me a topic that uh, I began studying under his mentorship uh, and under his tutelage. Um, I also want to thank Patrick Lennon and the Lennon Foundation for the invitation to be here with you tonight. It's a, a fantastic organization. And it, and it is really humbling to be here in a long line of, of fantastic speakers that have been a part of uh, the, the uh, Cultural Freedom Project that's based here at the Lennon Foundation. And I really want to thank uh, especially Barbara Ventrello, who has shepherded me all along the way in preparing for the talk, and I, I hope I do not disappoint. Um, I want to say, first of all, um, thank you for being here, and I want to apologize because tonight's subject is not a chipper subject. It's not a, a, a fun topic to discuss. Uh, it's a topic that's very serious, and uh, there are a few images that may be somewhat uh, offensive or um, distressing to you. I've tried to keep that to a minimum, but I also don't want to over-sanitize a topic uh, that is uh, very painful and, um, and very real. Um, I want to start out, first of all, with the question, why should we care what happens in Mexico? For those of us, the 14 or 16 million of us who live along the U.S.-Mexico border, that's a dumb question. We understand, uh, for the most part, why Mexico is important. But when you look at U.S. politics and you look at uh, the political discourse in the United States and you look at the news coverage in the United States, uh, you might ask this question, why don't we care more about Mexico? Uh, you open up the New York Times uh, or uh, other major national newspapers and you don't uh, see a lot of news uh, about Mexico, uh, despite the fact that the world's richest man, uh, Carlos Slim, a Mexican, owns currently 6% of the New York Times. Uh, I don't even think they get 6% of the coverage. Uh, but um, that, that reality, the fact that uh, a major Mexican businessman is investing here in the United States, uh, like companies like Bimbo, the people who produce your Thomas's English muffins, um, or Lala Milk, uh, the, the folks who are making uh, much of your butter and, and milk products, things that you probably didn't even know were Mexican, uh, are influencing our lives every day. And okay, wow. First, I want to comment on that presentation. I want to tell you how much research and analysis lies behind that. This is very difficult research to do. You cannot go interview these drug lords and say, you know, I'm an anthropologist. I like to do a little participant observation here. Can I sit in on your consultations on where you're going to sell the drugs? Uh, and secondly, we're reliant on official statistics that kind of in some ways make us nervous because we're not sure that governments don't have a bias, so I simply want to suggest that what you've heard and seen is a tremendous co um, consolidation of an enormous amount of original research that really uh, sheds great light on a serious problem, not only in Mexico, but also the United States. So, congratulations. Thank you. Now, that said, let me ask you some questions. There you go. Uh, you've made clear implicitly in tonight's presentation and in your writing that there is no silver bullet for solving uh, this problem. But let me ask you about silver, silver bullets. Uh, one, of course, is legalization. That, uh, the argument is made that if the United States were to legalize drug consumption, that essentially uh, drug consumption and marketing would, would go into the interplay of the market. We'd see laws of supply and demand and that uh, essentially um, this would resolve uh, the problem. What do you say about that? Uh, the, the silver bullet theory on legalization has two flaws. They're not fatal flaws, but they're very serious things that we need to consider. Um, the first is that um, if we legalize drugs, we will have a lot of social problems that result from the legal consumption of, of mind-altering substances in our society. Last year, 
uh, there were approximately 14,000 uh, uh, drunk driving fatalities in the United States. Um, we would almost certainly see an increase from the five or 6,000 uh, dru other drug-related okay. uh, health okay. effects. We'd also see uh, widespread problems of addiction and so on. So one problem is if we legalize drugs, we have to accept that there are costs uh, to society to doing that. Well, but let me ask you, you referred in your presentation to prohibition of alcohol and then the lifting of prohibition and you know, what's wrong with having another, you know, problem like alcohol? I mean, there are all sorts of issues about, you know, uh, driving accidents and kind of the dangers that come from overconsumption, this, that, and the other thing. I mean, no one is suggesting it's, you know, it's going to be super cool and everything's going to be great, but that the cost might be less than the cost of current policy. Right. And that's a social choice, right? I mean, that's, that's what political scientists study is how do societies decide what kinds of rules do they want to live by? And, you know, when I first started looking at this issue um, in, intensely five or six years ago, I would talk to politicians uh, about this, and they'd say there's no uh, political maneuvering on this issue. The American public is resolutely opposed to any form of legalization. And, frankly, I think the politicians are behind the curve. Um, they're playing it safe. Because when you look at opinion polls, when you look at California, which voted right. on Prop 19, 48 uh, percent uh, voted in favor. Right. Uh, oh, but a legalization of marijuana. Of, of a specific drug. I, I don't think most Americans are totally comfortable with the idea of their 18-year-old kids uh, huffing glue or uh, using methamphetamine or snorting coke right. at the dinner table. 